coach special teams last week against Seattle. Your assessment? Didn't tackle well. Kickoff cover. Didn't get off blocks, really. I mean, didn't have a chance to tackle until you get off blocks. You know, the first two reps. Got better as the game went on. Um, punt, didn't have to cover one. You know, the the tip ball, you can't have a, a punt blocked. Some people call it a tip. I call it a block. But from a uh, punt cover standpoint, it was good. You know, zero yards on the one that they tried to attempt the week before, six yards. So coverage on punt so far has been good. It's only two reps. Um, kickoff return has been a bright spot. You know, averaging over 30 yards per return, and so that's been good. But we're blocking well. We're just not getting off blocks and not tackling. Excuse me, Tom. What kind of camp so far for McManus and Martin, both in the games and in practice? Um, both in games and practice, very good. You know, um, Sam, to start with Sam, he's been hitting the directional ball very, very well. You know, both the left ball, the right ball. Um, I think it's come through in games also. You know, that punt he hit, the, the punt to the right the other day from, you know, 53 yards. We net 63 yards with a penalty. That's, that's what we expect from him, you know. Um, Brandon's done a nice job on field goals. We've hit over seven, excuse me, eight field goals over 60 yards, and he's only missed one. So he's, uh, he's done a great job from a field goal standpoint. Kickoffs, we just want more hang time. You know, we've got to help this young group, and he's going to keep working on it. We need about another two, two tenths of a second, you know, to help the, the guys in coverage. In that young group, like you mentioned, who are some of the players that are emerging as leaders on coverage? You know, I'll be honest with you, none yet. You know, Mace, we didn't cover well. You know, leaders produce. You know what I'm saying? From a coverage standpoint, you got to go down and tackle. Then you get a voice. There's no voice yet. They haven't earned it. Um, Beck's going to be a guy that I think is going to have a voice. He's done it in the past. Uh, I, the guy that has played well as is, is a vet is Eric Saubert. You know, coming in here, and he's been a surprise as a why. Went down and made two tackles. So those guys, you know, when you go make a tackle, you have a voice. But right now, none of those young guys have a voice. Yeah. Haven't is made it, enough plays yet. Is, is it technique? Is it effort from them? What do you what do you No, say? It's, it's just a shed. It's not It's not effort. You know, you got to shed blocks. They go down, they get locked on. You know, they're all trying to find the ball. The speed is different. Once you lock on, you got to shed. You know, drive and shed. Right now, we're driving and staying locked on. So we're blocking ourselves. And it's, it's recognition of the return, too. You know, there's keys that give the return direction away, and they haven't seen it, you know, live, full speed. And I got to do a better job, you know, in practice of getting that full speed for them. You know, it's not on the players. The coach has got to, coach has got to get that done. Is Deontay, are you settled on Deontay? Bolden? Not settled, no. You know, I, you know you'll, see, uh, you'll see some other guys. It's just right now we've only had a chance to really return one ball. All the others are fair catches or they've been short. So you'll still see TB and uh, Kendall. Um, and uh, Spence, those are the three guys from a punt return standpoint you'll see. You know, Croc and Cleve will, will get kick returns also along with the other two. But this weekend, uh, Kendall and Trinity will handle a lot of the punt return duties, and you'll see Croc and Cleve see if those guys can do it. I know what Spence can do. Where's Deontay have to improve as a punt returner? Obviously, he took some strides last year at his first touchdown. How does he continue that? Uh, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, every single ball he's got to catch straight up. And when I say straight up, you know, he, he has a tendency at times to get his body turned. And naturally, that's like a catcher on a fastball turning your body. You're not going to stop that ball. And that's where muffs occur. So that's the biggest thing that, that I got on him about, you know, from last year. And he's done a great job in camp, has no drops, but is squaring up the football. You know, and just those, that decision of break on it faster. Don't wait on the ball. Get back and get it. And then from a kick return standpoint, you know, we got to hit that hole. There's a couple. We left some yards out there. I think if you look at the Carolina game also, situational football, they hit a dribble on us. You know, at the end, didn't hit the onside. We thought they were going to hit the onside, and he thought we'd go into the end zone like the New England game, and we picked the ball up at the one, and you get two yards. You know, and then we got a punt from uh, the two-yard line four plays later. Excuse me, three plays later. So it's just decisions, and he's, he's getting better and better at that. What about a guy like Trinity Benson? How has he maybe impressed? We've seen him make some plays on offense, but how's he, how would you evaluate him? No, he's stuff? really progressed since, you know, he got here. You know, I, I can't remember if it's like Central Oklahoma or wherever he came from, but he had never even caught an NFL punt. And what people don't realize is in the National Football League, you see these great returners coming out of college. Well, they're not catching punts. Okay, they're catching balls that are on the ground. You know, the average hang time in college is under four. The average hang time in the National Football League is over 4.6 seconds. So it's a whole different ball game. But he can catch now. You know, he could never even get under a ball. And so he's, he's just mature and he believes in himself. He's using that speed where before he couldn't use it because he was just trying to get underneath the ball. But I love his maturity. You know, he's tough. He can run. He's going to be able to play on the four core. So impressed as heck with, with uh, Trinity. 
The coverage units, especially early in the game, how, how close is that to a starting unit versus you just seeing kind of different Zero. guys playing? So you seeing guys playing in different spots? Oh, or? yeah. There's, it's, that's not even close to who will, I believe in my guess, will be our starting units. Yeah. Well, so then does that give you a little bit of comfort knowing that you're going to have no. 50? Every single guy's got to play for us because you guys all know, you know, the practice squad guys that start the year, they're playing for you week seven. I mean, that's reality in this league. So, no, we need to, everybody needs to make plays, shed blocks. and. How much is only having three preseason games affecting your overall evaluation? It doesn't because I think we had four Mays. You know, when you get the practices with Minnesota, that helped us. That was great, you know, with the coach setting that up or whoever set it up. But I use that as an evaluation those two days. So that's four games to us. And to be honest with you, our guys are going to play a lot this week. You know, so we get a chance to really evaluate. Most of the time in the fourth preseason game, guys are playing the whole game. You know, they're your special teams core guys. So you can't really evaluate them because they can't, they can't breathe. When you can't breathe, it's hard to cover a kick. So you don't understand what I'm saying. So it's been nice that we have a chance to really evaluate these young players. And, and the best players win games. You know, it's not if you're drafted. It's not if you're – best players are what you win with. So they get a chance to see who's the best. Going back to the leadership thing, losing Joe Jones, is that hurt in that regard? Joe's a great leader, but um, I think guys got to step up, you know, and they got to lead. You know, that's the NFL. You change every single year. I showed the guys uh, the first day at camp. I showed them a drill that we did, did it two years ago, and all the special teams guys were there, and there's only four guys left. So that's the reality of this league. It's the best pool of players you've had in three years you get to choose from. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is this the best pool of players you get to choose from in the three years you've been here? In the league? Uh, I, I can't say that, you know, yet. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of those guys that's going to evaluate what we've had here, haven't had here. Any uh, mistakes that are made by the players, I'm always going to take that. That's on me. Every unit. Eric is tough. You know, it's, it's hard to find a tight end that can run like him, and he is as physical as a linebacker. He can shed. He does every single thing you ask him to do. He's prepared. He comes into the meeting rooms, and all the guys see his notebook, and, and he is, he's mean, you know, and that's, that's what you need. You need a physical guy that's your third tight end, you know, and he accepts his role, and he loves his role, and he wants to be the best tight end in the league on special teams. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.